witchcraft and the occult. It seems everywhere we turn today, we see their images and influences. Many think these are harmless, but is that true? And could there be even more hiding in front of our very eyes? Well, today, with the help of our special guest. Oh, good. Another occult expert is going to christian explain our practices and why they don't conform to their holy books. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my friends. So we have another ex-witch and ex-Satanist that is going to tell us the dangers of the occult. And this video is titled The Rise of Witchcraft. What's really happening? Billy Crone exposes Hollywood and government and more. A special shout out to Kelvin Frazier for finding this little gem for us to watch so that we too can learn how witchcraft is on the rise. And apparently somehow they are going to expose Hollywood, the government, and much more. A big shout Shout out to my Patreons who make these videos possible. Thank you. And now, on with the show. I hope you enjoy. Well, he is a former follower of occult practices until Jesus changed everything. Now he is raising awareness within the church about the dangers that may be lurking in our homes, classrooms, screens, and beyond. The dangers? Oh no, I did not know there were actual objective dangers that could be brought about by practicing the occult. What tangible, observable, and falsifiable dangers should I be aware of? So Billy Crone here claims to have been involved in witchcraft, New Age, the occult, and Satanism. And surprise, surprise, he has written a book on it and is here to promote it. Not sure why so many ex you name it write books on a topic, but I'm guessing seen it's quite the lucrative business. No alternative motives here. He just wants to save souls from the countless dangers of witchcraft. Well, Billy is here to help us answer those questions. You were involved in the occult. You were involved yeah. in witchcraft. You were involved in the New Age movement. Just to be clear, he was involved in witchcraft and New Age, because those two things are not the same. People can study both, but New Age is not witchcraft, and witchcraft is not part of the New Age movement. So how serious are things right now in the world as it relates to these these uh, occult, witchcraft, etc.? Right. Well, it's very serious because whether people want to believe it or not, this is really going on. How serious is it? Well, apparently there are tangible and observable objective dangers. But I have a feeling they are going to be referencing the Bible and these so-called dangers are only subjective and assumed to exist. Uh, Old Testament, New Testament, but specifically the Bible tells us what kind of a society is going to arise on the whole planet during the seven-year tribulation that Jesus said, Matthew 24, is going to be the worst time in the history of mankind. The wrath right? of the Lamb. Right. Mm. And you don't want to be in that time frame. And praise God through Jesus, you don't have to be. Wouldn't this be happening regardless of other religions and beliefs being practiced? And when you install the one world religion of your form of Christianity, will this prevent the wrath of the Lamb? Right. But he tells us an aspect of what is going to be that kind of society that's the worst in the history of mankind. Well, it's all about the occult. You're just saying that. You are not giving an example or any specifics of what you are referring to. And this is in the trumpet judgments in the seven-year tribulation. And it tells you, here's just one slice of the state of mankind during that time frame. It says this, the rest of mankind, verse 20, Revelation 9, the rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. All right, well, what were they involved in? Watch this. They did not stop worshiping demons. Mm. Wow. What? The, yeah. And, and the, the context is global. Yep, I called it. These so-called dangers are subjective assumptions based off their holy book. Right? And then it goes on and says, and then they do not stop worshiping demons, and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Watch this. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, uh, pharmacia there, uh, sometimes translated as witchcraft or sorcery, uh, and their sexual immorality or theft. So what's that sound like? Except for the murder and theft, it sounds like a good time. I am well aware of how you view modern witchcraft and how you cherry-pick Bible verses and twist them for your bigoted agenda. But regardless, except for the occasional altar fire, modern witchcraft poses no tangible or observable objective danger for the operator. Now, if you piss a witch off, that's on you. And we're just going to ignore the fact that most Christians wear a gold, silver, or wooden cross? An idol, 
or as a symbol of their Lord and Savior? Oh, and maybe you consider yourself a purist and don't wear such idols? Well, let me ask you this. At what point does your desire for purity turn to extremism? And why do you focus on pagans, witches, and occultists so much? Sounds like today. today. Yes. Right? And so really what we're seeing is this is not only going on. It shouldn't, on the one hand, as a born-again Christian who reads the Bible, what a concept, uh, shouldn't be surprised. I don't condone it, but we're not surprised because this is what's going to permeate the planet yeah. and it's going to culminate in the seven-year tribulation and with the help of Hollywood, all kinds of secular entities, we're seeing a whole new generation. You can't blame murder, theft, and whatever the hell is going on in Hollywood on witchcraft. They are out to make money and fantasy sells. It's not our fault that fantasy puts butts in the seats. Maybe spice up your Bible a bit and pitch another Ben-Hur, Moses, or Noah's Ark movie. I'm sure kids today would love a movie based on the begats. That if they don't receive Christ their Savior and repent of this stuff, uh, then guess what? They're going to be a part of this wicked society. That's full of the occult. Well, personally, between living according to a Christian life or a witch life, I'll stick with the witch life. I'm tired of being emotionally blackmailed and told what words I can say and which words are curse words and thus should not be used. I want to be free to marry whoever I want and sleep with in whatever position I want. Let's talk about some of the places that we're seeing it in culture today. Specifically, I'm curious your take on a really popular show on Netflix called Stranger Things. Yeah. Wow. It, what are your thoughts? Stranger Things. Uh, st stranger Things is to me why, it, you, want, you want a strange thing? Yeah. A strange thing is why any Christian would watch any show that glamorizes and glorifies occult activity and behavior. These Christian Karens think every weird, scary thing is occult. They have no idea how tedious it actually is and how much reading is involved. I'd bet this guy a hundred bucks that he has no idea what the three books of occult philosophy are or if he could name more than two famous authors. Right, any of them. You know, uh, and not to uh, beat a dead horse in the ground, but you go back to uh, blatant occult, and not just shows, but that literally instructs people how to get involved in that. You go back to the Harry Potter series. Exactly. Sure, if you think waving a stick around and uttering a few made-up Latin-sounding phrases is the occult, Harry Potter's fantasy, it is made-up Hollywood magic. It's a 43-plus billion, not million, billion-dollar franchise. And witches and those who are involved in the occult are more honest than, dare I say, many professing Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, because they admit that that series has been the best the best promotion in the history of mankind for their craft, i.e. witchcraft. Who says this? Where are you getting this from? You're just making shit up. If kids believe that witchcraft and the occult is waving a stick around, then they will grow bored real quickly. Besides, I think most kids understand that Harry Potter is fantasy. It is not real. Thanks, Chad. There, and, and for proof of that, we even share studies. Could you share that study with us now? I mean, you are making some nice claims with no supporting evidence. I could claim Christianity is dangerous because I think so. <laughs> so, there. Of uh, kids who watch or read the Harry Potter books and witchcraft or watch occult shows and things of that nature, they admit that this has an influence on them, unlike the parents say, oh, it's entertainment, it's not going to influence them. They, at least the kids are honest. So the straw men of witches, occultists, and now kids are the only honest ones? Parents are the ones lying? <laughs> I'm having a hard time figuring out who your target audience is. I'm guessing it's other pearl-clutching Christian Karens such as yourself. And they admit, yes, and not only they want to get involved in the occult and in witchcraft, but they want to have, it's like one person's like, I, and I want to learn how to cast spells so I can get back at my teacher or this schoolmate or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they're doing it with a, a kind of a, a hatred. That's, why would you encourage right, that? Right. In fact, there's so many, listen to this, this sounds strange. There's so many witches right now in the U.S. military that they're having to accommodate wow. for their covens. <laughs> I've met several witches and heathens in our military, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of them for their service. They're defending our country and defending our Bill of Rights. So, yeah. They get equal treatment under our First Amendment. Have a problem with our nation being a secular nation? tough. 
What? Right? No. I'm not joking. In one of them, no. in one military base, uh, there's uh, at that time of the interview, uh, there was 300 witches on that military base that had their own coven. Yeah, at this point, I don't believe any of your statistics made up on the fly. I found an article from 1999 where there were a few dozen witches on one base. I doubt there would be 300 on one base, but if so, good for them. And again, thanks to each and every one of you for your service. This guy is so foolish. You know the word demon, demonion in the Greek, you know what it means? Intelligent ones. Uh, no, it doesn't. You do realize we have access to Google, right? Daemons were considered to be intermediary spirits between the gods and mortals. Later, this word would become demons and relegated to only evil spirits in your Bible. Mm. Demons are very smart. Satan's very smart. Yeah. In fact, they've been, been here for 6,000 years. So, not only is he a religious bigot, but he's also a young earth creationist. We haven't heard his credentials yet, but I'm assuming he is also lying about his involvement with witchcraft. But I'll hold that presumption for now. So how do you know your last days? Yes, in the world you're going to see a rise of occult behavior, wickedness. Wicked! Wicked! W w w wicked! What we're seeing today, wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, that's all signs. So now, witchcraft is up there with death, war, famine, and disease? Is witchcraft the new fifth horseman of the apocalypse? Uh, and I make this point in the study. Could you share your study, please? I'm very interested in your demographic and population samples, along with the various data points used. Though, I have a feeling there's a good reason why you are not sharing it. Every, that's a 20-part study. Every study I start off, Old or New Testament, because it's in both, passages specifically calling out, don't get involved in witchcraft. So you started your study off by referencing Bible verses that condemn witchcraft? Gee, this study doesn't sound biased in the least bit. Mm -hmm. Are there and, different kinds of witchcraft? Oh yeah, there's different kinds. That was a very good question, but he doesn't want to educate people on modern witchcraft today. He wants to condemn it based off mistranslation from Hebrew to Greek in his 2,000-year-old holy book. You know, you talk about different types of witchcraft, the New World Order, Wicca, New Age, but what are some actual practices? New World Order? I know you want everyone to convert to Christianity and install it as the one world religion, but some of us are accepting and tolerant of others' beliefs and even welcome different beliefs and religions. And how the hell did witchcraft get associated with the New World Order? Oh, that's right. Thanks, Alex Jones. Besides, you have nothing to worry about. Have you ever seen witches try and organize a simple full moon ritual? Let alone organize trying to take over the world. We'll leave that to rich oligarchs. I swear, you people are f idiots. You want to blame every single thing on your imaginary enemies. Spiritual warfare, the one-sided fantasy battle that constantly needs to find an enemy of witchcraft. What does well, that look like for people? Well, uh, well, there's categories of witches and there's different kind of witches. And the reason why there's so many different kinds is because one of the underpinnings and one of the attractions that people have to the occult and certainly witchcraft is it's based on experience and relativism. Yeah, I'm guessing his experience is based off lies and assumptions. There are many forms of witchcraft practices based on various cultures and beliefs. Witchcraft nor the occult are dogmatic. Relativism is basically whatever you believe is true to you, whatever I believe is true to me, even if it's mutually exclusive, it yeah. doesn't matter because that's your world and whatever. That's rampant in our society that today. Now, that's contrary to what the scripture says. That's a very complicated way of saying, yes, there are other beliefs in the world. Even within Christianity, there are many different denominations. So, relativism is rampant in your own monotheistic cults. <laughs> I mean, religions. So, and then the irony is they say there are no absolute truths. Well, you just made an absolute statement, so you can't escape wow. from it, but... Who? Who said this? And who is speaking on behalf of everyone who studies the occult or identifies as a modern-day witch? Sure is easy to build up these straw men and then tear them down when you are representing both sides of an argument. Just show us your damn 20-point study already. Okay. Right. You might have some that are called like Alexandrian witches. That's a section of, of Wicca. And that's because it's a model of a Wicca or witchcraft, because that's what the word Wicca means. It means witch. Um, and it's a model after Alex Sanders, who developed 
Alexandra. You may have somebody who's a Gardnerian witch. Well, that was from the grandfather of Wicca, okay, Gerald Gardner, right, who developed the first formulaic uh, book called the Book of Shadows of spells and potions and things of that nature. Wow, basic information anyone can find on the internet. We are nearly halfway through the video and still nothing about the actual dangers of witchcraft. But then you might have some that's called an eclectic witch. Right? And they just grab a little bit from anybody because, you know, you can make it up as you go. Right? You may have some that's called an environmental witch. Right? Or a hereditary witch. They're doing it because their family has been doing it for multiple generations. So does somebody just decide, they, they get involved in all this and they just decide they want to be a witch? Yes, or, like what's the motivation? Yeah, what like, power? Well, motivation, again, I think is inherently, I think people are spiritual. Mm -hmm. uh, even atheists, you know, that's the old axiom. There, there's no atheists in foxholes. Right? Yeah. You, you know there's a God. Mm -hmm. In fact, if, if you're a true atheist, then why are you spending so much time fighting against a God that you say yes. doesn't exist, right? So, so I, don't, I don't buy that. Plus, the scripture, more importantly, says...